This is a 12 by 22 cabin. No one's supposed to have this coat except two people on my team and someone figured it out. We finally are doing it guys. We are building a tiny home rental vending machine. It's complicated, it's awesome, and I'm super excited to start this series with you, sponsored by Ladder Life, who is the company that I go through to get my term life insurance for only $32 a month for a million dollars worth of coverage, in case some sort of tragedy befalls me doing one of these videos. Anyway, this is a 12 by 22 cabin that we are converting into a coin-operated tiny home. Isn't it gorgeous, guys? Look at it. And all it's glorious. This. We have bought this from a company that my nephew works for for $7,000 and we're going to turn it into home and we're going to see how much does it cost to make. Can we do it in a way that we can actually make money off of and can we build housing units for under $15,000 a piece to a modern quality. We're going to do it off grid, solar powered, rainwater collection. Uh, just to get around some of the laws and requirements for building something on grid. I think we can build a off-grid cabin, rent it out, be profitable, and do it all in this video series. So let's go. So this is the back end of the tiny house. I know it's not much to look at, but the way it's set up, we've got a full uh, loft area in the top of it, and the full size of this is 320 square feet. My thought process is I can rent it for under a dollar square foot. We'll do solar power on top. I've got, I've cooked up a very unique sewage handling system so we can totally off-grid the whole house. And because we're here in Ohio, um, legally speaking, these aren't too hard to make and use for rentals. And I think that we'll be able to get between 150 and 250 a month out of it, easy. I probably could go for a lot more, but I figured doing a video series on housing affordability would be really cool. So let's go inside and talk about the quirks and the features of me building an off-grid solar-powered tiny home. Hey guys, everybody needs life insurance and Ladder Life is by far the best company to use if you want a quick life insurance quote. I personally got a $1 million life insurance policy for only $32 a month and I only had to spend five minutes of my time on their website getting a quote. It's super easy to fill out their forms and they have by far the best rate that I've ever seen. So do me a big favor and click the link in the description and help support our sponsor for today. So this is certainly the most ambitious thing we've taken on with the channel, building an off-grid tiny home. We'll rely on a lot of remote access technology. We're going to put about four kilowatts on the roof line and then have another four kilowatt hours worth of on-site storage. Like I said, it's going to be infrastructure free, so everything runs off-grid. It gives me a lot of freedom to put this house that I plan on renting anywhere I want, especially maybe free from government regulations. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, because I got a good deal on this and our sponsor essentially is paying for the development of it. I'm already not happy. We just went the corner and I see a very big problem. You can tell me, Noah can tell me if he can see the issue. See the issue, Noah? Um, I would say there's no key. <laughs> yeah. No one's supposed to have this code except two people on my team and someone figured it out. So unless this is unlocked, which it's not, I'm gonna have to get on the phone and start calling people to try to figure out what happened to the keys here. We just met with Shane, my main maintenance guy. He, he said he put a lockbox on it. The trash out crew was here and uh, now the key's gone. It's locked. So, this is one we're transferring from one investor to another and we've got, we're going to do a renovation on it. We put a lot of money in it to begin with and we're going to put a lot of money in it again. This is one of where we had a person pass away from so we're just finally getting to it. And we're going to go and inspect it and the keys are stolen so uh, we'll have to figure out something else to do.
several days later. So we're just going through here super quick and we're gonna see how much money we pulled out. We'll pull out of this machine. We'll go back to the office and do another count because I, I came here, shot a short video of the last collection and I think we did uh, like thousand dollars already. So we're doing pretty, pretty dang solid at this point in the laundromat. Sales continue to be up. I'm not sure offhand what we've done this month, but we're rounding out the month now. I don't know that we've increased sales significantly, but they're still doing really well. We did have to put a brand new roof on the, the laundromat. So I've got, I'm, I'm gonna have to spend $10,000 when the time comes to pay the contractor for the brand new roof. Come over here. This was caused because of a leaky roof years ago, and that leaky roof was just never resolved. So we've had to go in, it's a $10,000 problem. But we're gonna get this all fixed before Danny comes to town, because I know he'll make fun of me. And he'll complain and say that I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm not, I know what I'm doing. I'm just really, really busy all the time. We're gonna see how much money's in here real quick. And then uh, we will go and count it to the office in a little bit. So, yeah. if you look at this, we still have a lot of quarters in there. So it won't be a huge money collection, but eh, not too bad. We'll add this to what we have and we'll go and take this and we'll do a full collection on it. I've got probably, 300 bucks worth of quarters in this bag. Of course, going to dump them right back in the machine. So we're doing pretty good on quarters, which I'm happy about. I got another thousand dollars of quarters, maybe 1500 set back for the new machine because it holds 20,000 quarters in it. Get a closer shot of dumping the quarters back in. I do it every time. We're doing pretty good, I think, generally overall here at the laundromat. So let's go and see how much money that is. I looked at buying a plastics factory last yesterday. No one I had talked about this. I had a call yesterday afternoon. I said, they told me, jump in the car, go run over to the plastics factory. The guy's willing to start cutting a deal on it. And this is a plastic factory that I looked at three years ago and the guys want to sell for not a lot of money. I was not allowed to shoot any video because it's packed 71,000 square feet or more. And it's a pallet store. He bought a plastics factory for his pallet return store full of stuff there's a pathway for me to buy the factory with all the stuff in it but we're driving here on fifth street in town and we're pulling up to the wonder bread factory in chillicothe it reminded me of a much better version of this wonder bread factory now we're gonna flip the camera around and i want to ask noah if he would buy bread made at this factory here that i looked at buying they wanted eighty thousand dollars for this one it's sixty thousand square feet and here it is. We would not buy bread from here. We would not buy bread. Everything in this place has been stolen. So we're gonna do a story time. When I looked at this place, I kicked over a box and it was full of M16 parts. <laughs> it was full of crap because they had a military surplus store. Like someone owned a military surplus store and they put all their stuff in there. I was like, cool, military surplus because I could see like Vietnam era um, uniforms. I kicked over a box and it was full of M16 buffer tubes. And I said, I know what those are. So I wanted to buy this uh, bread factory. It's the Wonder Bread factory. So bad because this part had the machines to manufacture Wonder Breads. And now it is graffitied up and they probably make meth in there. Although that deal didn't work out, I'm thinking maybe we can put something together on a plastic factory here in, in town. But we'll talk about that on the channel as the time comes up. So now me and the crew head back to my office where we finally get to do the money count for about a week worth of laundromat money.
We end up with 970 quarters. Now we're going to do the nickels and dimes count because I give them to the kid upstairs. He gets pretty excited. Unfortunately, jammed up, but we ended up with $18.50 on that one, $5.50 in nickels, and $242.50, which is pretty good for about a week worth of vending money. Now I go through the absolutely terrible task, that's a joke, of counting all the money, or at least sorting the money so that we can stick it in the bill counter and go. This right here is the vending machine total from the last week. So we've taken that money and we've put it right here. So we're gonna just add to the total. This is all washer and dryer money. Better. Okay, stay here, Let's see what it is. All right, 245, stay here. All right, 362. This is just in ones. We'll stick this here. Okay, grab our pile of fives. Put it right here. Okay, 702. It's a pretty good collection. Put it here. Okay, we've made some modifications on the channel so that a lot of this is after expenses, so. 832 for this week, we'll start. Oh crap. Okay, so 852. Try to get it. All right, so $1,252 this week, and this is after paying a bunch of expenses, so that's really not too bad in my eyes. Make sure you like and subscribe and don't miss the next vlog where... That's where it's at.